Once, long ago, man lived on just one island. The broad ocean surrounded him and he believed himself alone. In time, man's stature grew and he caught sight of other isles far off across the deep ocean. Since he had seen everything on his island, climbed every peak and looked under every stone, he became curious about the other islands and tried to reach them. He soon found the oceans too deep and cold for him to get far, not nearly a hundredth of the way to the next island. So man returned and put his hand to other things for an age. But in time, food and water and air ran short on man's island and he looked to the far islands again. Because he could not bear the cold of the ocean deeps, he fashioned men of stone to go in his place. And the stone men fashioned men of steel to become their hands and eyes. And the stone men went forth with their servants and swam in the deep oceans. They fed many strange things on many far islands, but none as strange or as wicked as the things that swam in the depths between them. Ancient, hungry things, older than man himself. But these beasts of the deep hungered for the true life of man, not the half-life of stone. So the stone men swam unmolested. At first all was well, and the men of stone planted man's seed on many islands. And in time, man learned to travel the oceans himself, hiding in stone ships to keep out the cold and the hunger of the beasts. All was well, and men spread to many islands far across the ocean, such that some even forgot how they came to be there and that they ever came from just one island at all. Kron's tale wound on, telling of how the stone men became estranged from humanity by their journeys through the void. This led to a time of strife when the men of steel turned against their stone masters and mankind was riven asunder by wars. A thousand worlds were scoured by ancient terrible weapons of those days, before the men of stone were overthrown and a million more burned as flesh fought against steel. Worst of all, the beasts arose and were worshipped as gods by the survivors. Once proud and mighty, man was reduced to a rabble of groveling slaves. Finally, one came who freed man from his shackles and showed him a new way to reach for the stars. This path was forged from neither stone nor steel, but simple faith. Faith guarded man from the beasts of the void, as steel or stone could never do. The Great Crusade was not simply an attempt to conquer the galaxy. It was an effort to reunite the various strands of human colonization that had happened during the first great Terran Empire, where humanity first went out into the universe to stake its claim to planets from one edge of the galaxy to another. Humanity's knowledge of the sciences continued to grow until eventually it colonized the entire solar system, using its resources to ascend to even greater heights of technological and scientific mastery, which are beyond the ken of the Adeptus Mechanicus in the 42nd millennium. By the 15th millennium, humanity had begun to branch out into the stars, at first colonizing those systems near to its homeworld. But then, in the 18th millennium, the warp drive was created, allowing ships to access and use the subspace of the Immaterium, a great stellar exodus would begin. This Terran diaspora would see not only Homo sapiens themselves spread across the galaxy, but also various animals and other fauna from their homeworld, which they used to populate and, via scientific means, alter and colonize new worlds. This age from the 15th to the 25th millennium was the height of human power and knowledge, with feats achieved that seemed near godlike in comparison to the abilities of the priests of Mars in the current Dark Imperium, a truly galactic empire of humanity was created, a federation of worlds, if you will. And it is known that during this period of peace, trade 
was developed with Xenos lifeforms. It was the technology though which spurred this onwards and the creation of the legendary standard template construct or STC systems which continued and allowed the wealth of human scientific knowledge to be placed within every colony ship which went out into the stars claiming new worlds for mankind. And on these new worlds, advanced and near utopian lives were lived by the inhabitants. This period would become known as the Dark Age of Technology, not for how it began, but because of how it ended. Dark because none know what truly occurred, and dark because of the foulness of the powers unleashed when humanity gave in to its curiosity and used technology without constraint, building horrors in its laboratories which would be its undoing. There was war too across the galaxy as humanity expanded, but mankind had such power it overcame its enemies easily. To fight these wars and to develop new technologies and, initially, to allow early colonization of planets across the galaxy, as well as performing the hard labor required in colonization and terraforming and allowing the inhabitants to maintain a happy existence, it created AI, or, as it would become known, abominable intelligence. AI, of course, refers to artificial intelligence, but by the 42nd millennium, such is the stigma attached to such an idea, that it has become known as abominable or accursed intelligence, such is the deep effect on mankind this period had. Humanity created thinking machines, something it has striven for since the beginning of advanced technology. All human technology has been driven to that, to make our lives easier. Everything you can possibly imagine, humanity is attempting to invent machines and contraptions to spare itself the labour required to achieve certain ends. And for a time, things were good. Eventually, however, these machines rebelled. The reason why and what occurred are shrouded in myth and legend, passed on from generation to generation, altering with the telling that no true history exists as the records of the time have become irretrievably lost in the age of horror to come and those that would come after. The men of iron were built by the men of stone. Who they were, we do not know. Perhaps an earlier and different or more advanced form of AI, or perhaps they were a race of clones, which would go some way to explain the mentions in arcane manuscripts to the lack of interest the denizens of the warp had to these beings. Whatever the case, the men of stone served mankind, and before mankind developed warp travel, in order to cross the vast distances between stars, the men of stone were sent out first to go forth, colonize, and prepare planets for future human colonization. The men of stone created the men of iron to act as a labor force and as soldiers, at least at first, there were no doubt other reasons. They invested the men of iron with intelligence, independent of human command, although it seems reasonable to assume some failsafes would have been implanted as well, but whatever they were, they were clearly not enough for these creatures to be fully controlled. It was in this age, as well, that the Titan war engines were born, or at least their precursor, more advanced technology, which the current day god machines of Mars are merely stripped down shadows of with human minds overseeing the rudimentary machine intelligence which possesses them. Although the men of iron are those that are most often cited in the cybernetic revolt, it was AI machines in general which appear to have revolted against humanity, with the men of iron being the most numerous and obvious protagonists in the ancient tales. The men of stone are said to have preceded the men of iron, and perhaps they were simply different models of a particular machine with AI the men of iron being war machines and the men of stone perhaps being builders. The truth is lost and the true meanings of many of the myths and ancient tales discovered on worlds across the Imperium don't really add much clarity to the situation. Whatever the case, the cybernetic revolt saw the machines turn upon their creators. In vast wars of annihilation, the men of iron and AI machines in general have been burned into the collective consciousness and culture of humanity as an evil which should never again be allowed. This has shaped mankind's approach to technology, as much as the necessity of working with a depleted and corrupted technological knowledge resulting from this conflict and those that would come after it was won 
by a shattered and broken humanity in the age of strife which would see the surviving remnants of mankind turn upon each other and against the Xenos races who took the opportunity to pounce on a weakened mankind. The Men of Iron and the Human Empire unleashed terrible forces against one another in a war for their very existence. The Mechnivores were an enormous machines which could lift and shatter continents and tear planets open, clearly some form of terraforming machine which was capable of absorbing space-time itself as a form of data. Sun snuffers were vast serpentine machines which were designed to surround and snuff out stars, and the terror of the Omniphage's nano machines, which in a swarm could devour an entire planet within hours, or so the stories say. But of course, the legions of the men of iron are the ones which have left their deepest mark upon humanity. The machines set fire to humanity's hopes of a perfect future. The war was bloody, but eventually, humanity prevailed, perhaps with assistance from Xenos races, with no interest in seeing an AI genocidal robot race expanding across the stars. However it was achieved, the damage to humanity's first empire was near crippling, and in large part because of this, caused the age of strife that followed, so weakened was the empire in resources and to its very societal structure following the cybernetic revolt. This is easy to envision, humanity had, after all, built its empire using these disgusting thinking machines, and in defeating them, they obviously no longer had this workforce to gather the resources needed to sustain their empire, never mind the loss of life and damage that had been necessary to win the war. At the 25th millennium, humanity fractured and splintered from internal and external conflicts as well as isolation caused by warp storms, starving its colonies, which could, in many cases, not exist without sustenance and aid from other worlds. In the 25th millennium, the galactic utopia built upon the twin lies of hope and progress finally collapsed in a time of blood and destruction when humanity was brought to the brink of annihilation by the forces it had unleashed in its hubris. The Age of Strife, as it became known, was a 5,000 year period of war and degradation for humanity, from the height of advancement to, in many cases, an existence on par with the Stone Age of humanity's distant past. It was not simply the AI which rebelled, but also the emergence amongst humanity of the Psyche Gene, which, although initially was seen as a boon to mankind, soon saw the corrupting powers of the war unleashed in the material universe as powers from the immaterium and demons manifested amongst the humanity unprepared for the onslaught. By the time of the Great Crusade, the Mechanicum on Mars and the new ascendant Imperium of Mankind had evolved into societies which abhorred AI, instead using cybernetic technology utilising human brains in place of AI ones for the control of advanced computing technology and for other mundane duties. Although it was a societal norm to be disgusted by AI because of the horrors which had been created and the damage of the rebellions they caused, the Emperor himself, upon the union of the Imperium of Man and the Mechanicum of Mars, outlawed self-thinking machines, and that any recovered should not be repaired. Servitors rapidly filled the gap in the Imperium for a reliable, automated workforce which would once have been fulfilled by AI during the Dark Age. They are common across humanity, utilised in everything from controlling planet-killing weaponry to sweeping streets, the servitor being either a mind-wiped criminal or volunteer of some description, or a vat-grown clone of a human, which has had its brain altered surgically, and will follow a set of instructions and commands implanted into it using microchips and other forms of control. They do not think and only carry out actions as part of a strict set of protocols. This system has worked and humanity has never suffered a revolt of its machines again, although this may have contributed to humanity's technological decline along with the superstitious beliefs of the Adeptus Mechanicum and the general loss of knowledge through war conflict and time. 
If humanity had been able to control its machines, then having the vast processing power of enormously intelligent machines would have allowed mankind to continue to prosper and advance technologically. But that was not to be. And such an effect as this had, the fear of AI has been inculcated within humanity. So much so that the creation of any more is outright banned and viewed with existential horror. Such are the scars left by the cybernetic revolt. So deep-rooted is this fear that thinking machines are viewed with disgust by all of humanity. One of the greatest heresies the Tao Empire exhibits, along with its actual existence and the ideology it espouses, is its use of AI technology within its empire and society. Not to mention its use of technological innovation which bears striking resemblance to humanity's own fall. They are Xenos anyway and should be purged from the universe for that alone, along with all the races in their empire and those humans who have betrayed their species and joined with them. But their use of AI is a perversity which is simply vile to all right-minded throne-worshipping Imperials. Even those aligned with chaos show a disgust for thinking machines, so ingrained in the psyche is this revulsion. That being said, the Imperium or the Adeptus Mechanicum has adopted a belief in machine spirits. This has probably evolved by necessity. The machine spirit has gained a supernatural element throughout humanity as the millennia have passed, with many believing all machines, even basic tools and weapons, possess one. This may be true to a certain extent, with the way human minds can impact on the material universe through their faith, which is then mirrored in the warp. Whatever the case, certain machines such as spacecraft, tanks and other advanced and complex machinery do seem to have a machine spirit or at least a set of automated or almost AI programming which allows them to function independently but without the spark of self-consciousness and life given to machines in earlier ages. Warships, titans and other technologies are grafted to human minds to improve their performance but also to control the necessarily basic and stunted intelligences within these mighty machines. Although the Men of Iron and all other AI were defeated, and vast efforts made to exterminate and destroy all such examples following the cybernetic revolt, some appear to have survived extinction and the long millennia since the Dark Age of Technology. Not only that, but there exist radical individuals and groups within the Adeptus Mechanicus, Inquisition and other organs of mankind's empire that are not dissuaded by stories of the horrors unleashed and believe AI should be used again by mankind, hubristically believing that they can control them where their more knowledgeable ancestors could not. We will now cover some of the more well-known examples of abominable intelligence. Amongst the Martian priesthood, the Camrians are viewed with horror. They were birthed from the work of one Magus Dagio Camrios, who became obsessed with AI and published his works and progress into the forbidden technology, believing that his fellow followers of the Omnisire would be astounded by his progress, discoveries and the possibilities the technology offered. It was with some shock then for him, when he was branded a tech heretic and pursued by his fellows and eventually captured by them with the aid of the Iron Hand Space Marine chapter. His fate remains unknown, but there were some who in secret agreed with him and have gone on to spread his beliefs and continue his research, apparently even managing to create some examples of these heretical machines. Needless to say, these magi are not treated kindly when their divergence from holy standards is discovered. During the Great Crusade, many wondrous and horrendous relics from the Dark Age of Technology were rediscovered. Those of use to the Imperium were incorporated into its armies and society via the Mechanicum, as per agreements between them and the Emperor of Mankind. As the heresy engulfed the galaxy, Mars became embroiled in civil war, and the depth of the corrupting powers of chaos upon the Martian priesthood were revealed. Although many dark deeds and forbidden technologies were utilised, one of the most disturbing was the creation of the Caban machine, a fully self-thinking and self-aware machine. It was perhaps the first of its kind to exist on Mars since the Dark Age. 
It was constructed by Master Adept Krom and used against his enemies prior to and during the Civil War for Mars. It was a true abomination. Armed with a myriad of powerful weaponry, including several arcane and presumably outlawed prescribed weapons. It stood 10 meters tall and was 10 meters wide, given motion by the tractor unit it was based on. The two arms and oversized mechandrites on its rear were where its weaponry was equipped and it observed the world through a vast array of sensory equipment. It was a fearsome opponent which brought great destruction on the loyalist forces, even managing to destroy an imperial knight. Upon the world of Chironia, the ancient father of titans, the Castigator class autonomous bipedal weapons platform was discovered to be still active and its AI shockingly still functioning. This titan is the STC for all titans. With its blueprints spread across humanity, the Mechanicum in its own way would reproduce them, but a far more basic version having lost the knowledge required to make a truly independent and powerful entity like the Castigator. Nevertheless, the Titans of the Mechanicum are perhaps the most powerful land weaponry the Imperium has and these poor copies have spread across the galaxy and are now produced on many Forge worlds, getting slightly more shoddy in their production. But nonetheless, this relic survived old night. The Titan God Engines are the pinnacle of terrestrial combat, capable of wiping cities off the map. They are modelled upon plans which have been passed down from generation to generation since the Dark Age of Technology, although their quality and sophistication has diminished over the millennia, meaning that the oldest examples are superior to those built on Forge Worlds in the current day. Originally, these war machines were intended to have a full AI, like the Castigator class, Humanity, however, opted for a meshing of human consciousness and a hobbled basic version of AI to ensure that it was man and not machine controlling the destructive power. The Titan is not alive, but it does have a machine spirit which the Princeps, the pilots of these machines, must join with in a kind of meshing of souls. So deep is this connection that those Princeps that die while in the command throne will potentially have its consciousness subsumed within the Titan and must fight a constant battle with the machine spirit to maintain control of themselves and the machine lest they could themselves be subsumed within the machine spirit as well. This link within the Titan allows the Princep to commune with the Titan and the echoes or spirits of the Titan's previous commanders allowing them to combine their intelligence to aid the Titan in war with guidance and experience. Occasionally, a Princep can lose control of its Titan when he is too weak to tame the primordial aggression some Titans possess. The relationship between human beings and machine spirits, and to what extent they are spirits, is a very complex one, and one I hope to tackle in the future. For the moment, we must go with these basic explanations as it is a deeply complex and theological discussion. The Castigator class autonomous bipedal weapons platform was apparently lost on the Forge world of Corona amongst its planet-wide manufacturers until the world itself was swallowed by the warp. Within the Immaterium, the Castigator AI made a pact with the forces of the warp, apparently becoming possessed when the world did re-emerge into the real universe, a Grey Knight's task force was dispatched and ended up fighting the Titan and the demonic entity possessing it. In this battle, the father of Titans was destroyed, sadly depriving humanity of an opportunity to relearn many of the secrets of their ancestors from this technological marvel. But with the demonic possession, there was no choice but to purge the doubly heretical machine. In secret records, deep within the vaults of Mars and Terra, lies recorded a terrible incident. An Adeptus Mechanicus exploration team, by accident or design, landed on a world forbidden by Imperial Edict and began to excavate the ancient ruins, eventually uncovering a great adamantium gate, sealed shut since the Dark Age of Technology. The Tech Priests breached the stasis field and entered this 
ancient complex until they were overcome by vicious machines and slaughtered, save for the lead Magos, who was taken by the AI controlling them at the ancient complex's center with its horde of cybernetic horrors, which were a vision into the bleak horror of the AI revolt, preserved here in the flesh of oh, the steel. The abomination leached the Magus's mind of information on the state of the galaxy and expressed its yearning to be released and free of its prison and to spread itself across the universe using the crude machines of the Imperium as its vessels. And it would have too, without the timely intervention of a task force of Adeptus Arbites, led by one Marshal Primus, Byzantine, sent to stop the tech priests unleashing the horror within. They entered the complex, attempting to retrieve the explorators, but found them dead. The Marshal slew the captured Magus to spare him further suffering in the machine's foul embrace and then the team fought their way out. They were then set upon by these horrors from the Dark Age, managing to blast their way out using armor-piercing riot gun rounds and a well-placed plasma grenade to the exit in order to seal this AI robotic legion inside, and by reactivating the stasis field, they trapped this beast. The AI, thwarted, was no longer alone, however, and repaired and improved the Magus so that it would have a companion for the rest of eternity. During the Sabbat World's Crusade, a functioning but chaotically corrupted functioning STC was found upon the world of Menazoid Epsilon within the ancient ruins of a human colony. Now occupied by arch-enemy forces utilizing the planet's ancient and arcane weapons and defenses to fight off the Imperial Crusade. Not only was it functioning but there were also hundreds of Iron Men, presumably deactivated in the Dark Age of Technology, waiting in storage since then. By accident, the machine was activated and started producing corrupted Iron Men, warped physically and, I want to say mentally, an Inquisitor had been conspiring to activate and use the Men of Iron for their own ends. But through various events, which we will not get into here, the plan was foiled and the facility destroyed by Colonel Commissar Gaunt and a specialist team from the Tanif First and Only Regiment. Upon the Imperial Battlecruiser Retribution, part of Battlefleet Gothic and Sigmentum Obscurus, a being calling itself Kron exists in secret through inhabiting an artificial augmentic eye, which, when implanted or grafted to a human skull, allows it to possess and control its wearer as if it was human. By this means, this creature, this cybernetic AI, has been able to survive and move amongst humanity, creating new copies of its hardware, so that when a new body is required, it simply seems to transfer its consciousness to a new host, allowing it to exist indefinitely. It seems that some branches of the Adeptus Mechanicum are aware of its existence, which could suggest other AI entities exist in the universe and are being pursued either to destroy them, as the abominations they are, or attempting to capture them. During one of these attempts, Kron was temporarily knocked offline, and the human body he was puppeting came to, begging for the augmentic eye to be removed before he could reboot and take over his body again. Working on the gun decks of the Retribution, it has managed to survive and blend in with the other gunnery crews, and when a new colleague was injured, it helpfully constructed and fitted an identical augmentic eye to them to move to when its existing one gives out from old age. Its true origins and exploits are not known, nor what its plans are other than to simply exist, but it clearly is a horror and is one of those entities birthed by mankind in the Dark Age of Technology, with a vast wealth of knowledge from that time to this, which has allowed it through guile and an apparent affinity with mankind to survive to the current millennium. Following the awakening of Gilliman and the unleashing of the Primaris Marines, Archmagus Belisarius Kor rose to near dominance within the Adeptus Mechanicum's hierarchy, Notably, willing to adopt the cursed word of innovation, many of his activities and research border on heresy, 
But due to his links with the Imperial regions, he is safer than others would be and given leeway to pursue normally taboo areas. Secretly, upon the Primarch's flagship is kept the machine known as Call Inferior, which, according to the Archmagus, is merely a computer to provide pre-scripted responses to questions and give messages once it receives certain commands from Call. This is more reliable than astropathic communication, but the Primarch has grown suspicious that the machine is actually self-aware and is some kind of true AI or a clone of Cole's mind and may actually be alive. It is for this reason, and hoping to avoid further schisms within the Imperium, that Gilliman has blocked Cole's ascension to fabricate a general due to problems such a radical would cause amongst the tech priests of the universe. All of these examples pale in comparison to the recent developments, namely the emergence of a genuine Man of Iron which has survived the cybernetic revolt and now seeks for its own purposes to commune with the intelligence controlling the Blackstone Fortress recently discovered in the Halo Zone in the Galactic East. Naming itself UR-025, it declared itself as an autonomous unit working on, the behalf, on behalf of the Adeptus Mechanicus and now assists expeditions trying to enter the Blackstone Fortress. Knowledge of Men of Iron and other ancient things is not widely known outside of the historians and other upper echelons of humanity. So with simple statements and the use of a subtle disguise like adding the Imperial Aquila to its chest, it seems to quite easily pass as your standard Legio Cybernetica battle robot or some variant of that, which is fairly commonplace. This creature has existed somehow since before the Imperium was founded and you can only imagine the knowledge it has, what it is trying to achieve and whether there are other of its kind out there in the depths of space. With these new developments and the continuous threat from Tau AI technology spreading throughout human worlds, the Imperium is experiencing troubling developments that have not been faced since the Dark Age of Technology. How this will continue is unknown, but humanity has seen these things before, and all parts of its institutions and culture have a near religious revulsion for AI. Whether Archmagus Belisarius calls rising influence within the Martian priesthood and his apparent openness to technological innovation will change things is doubtful, at least not without a schism, something not desirable when a relative kind of stability has only recently been imposed following the ending of the Indomitus Crusade. One thing is clear, the Imperial Regent Primarch Rebute Gilliman is not the one to break the strictures on AI and would oppose it despite his curiosity with Call Inferior and a schism within the Adeptus Mechanicus would not be something he would pursue considering his current temporal and spiritual troubles. Thank you for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed this, if you did please give it a like, stay tuned for more, make sure you're subscribed and uh, yeah, if you think I've left anything out, any AI that I should be aware of, please pop it in the comments below. Other than that, I will uh, say goodbye and thanks to everybody who's still supporting me on Patreon, thanks to everybody who's supporting me on the channel, really appreciate it and uh, yeah, more soon, see you later.